Um, this is actually a presentation I did. I don't know if anyone is familiar with Pachaka Chop, but I did this for Pachaka Chop, and I'm not going to do it for Chaka Chop style because I haven't done it for a while, and I'll totally screw it up because I don't know if anyone's done that, but um, you have to say a lot in 20 seconds. Um, so we'll just kind of go through this really quick. And it's just kind of a story for people. But I wanted to start, I wondered if any of you have ever had an idea that you wanted to make happen but had no idea how. <laughs> a few of you? And did anyone actually make the idea happen? How, okay, you want to tell us a little bit about it? Um, I am the coordinator for the Illinois Collegiate Rowing Invitational, and we invite like 10 to 12 teams every year down. Um, and last year was actually our first year. I had no idea how to go about it. And it actually kind of turned out okay, and today, or this year we're doing it again. It's also a mess, but hopefully it'll work out. <laughs> I love that. You know what? Sometimes things are a mess, and then somehow they, they do turn out okay, right? And so um, I will admit that not everything went exactly as we planned the first year, but we'll get to that. So, um, so this is uh, the this um, is the graphic that we use for Sea Volunteer, and it actually was developed by a volunteer, someone who volunteered to to provide their their graphic design services, and we loved what they came up with. And he was actually very young. I think he was fresh out of school, so it was really fun. Um, this is how I started my talk. So this is my grandmother and my mother and me at my brother's wedding. Um, the reason that I thought this was really important is um, my interest in community service started when I was really, really little. Because my grandma moved to um, Champaign when I was about five, I think. And she lived about a couple miles from her house, so I saw her all the time. And one of the things that she did is every week, whether, you know, no matter what, I mean, there could be a blizzard outside. I guess when she was 80, she didn't. But, um, no matter what, she would go over to the hospital and volunteer for, for you know, a whole day a week. And so I grew up seeing that every week, her doing that. And sometimes when I had holidays and I didn't have school, I would go with her. And I thought this was so cool. You know, they, of course, were excited because they got another, another bunch of public hands. But I thought this was the coolest thing ever. So the first volunteering that I ever did was with my grandma. And so she really left an impression on me. And so community service is just something that's always been really important to me. Um, I actually don't remember what that slide was about. <laughs> I don't, oh, I the remember. Formula. I remember. That's right. So we decided to come up with a formula for making um, something happen that you really want to, want to have happen. So I thought Einstein was a great way to, to you know, he was who I thought of when I thought of formula. So and may, if I may oh. interject, today is both Pi Day and Einstein's birthday. So oh, that's right. Very and applicable. Pi Day is that yep. it was Einstein's birthday, too. Yep. Well, anyway. So, we came up with a hypothesis, because I worked in engineering at the time, and our hypothesis was that effectively launching a public initiative would require three elements. Um, and you'll get to see what those three are in just a little bit. Um, but anyway, so we decided that there would be three things that we needed. The first one was a great idea. And so, that leads to, to this. So, I was living in Chicago before I moved back to Champaign. I was born here, but then I lived in Chicago for several years. And I, work, and I volunteered for this organization called CU Cares. I don't know, not CU, I'm sorry, <laughs> Chicago Cares. We were gonna call it CU Cares, but anyway, called Chicago Cares. And I don't know if anybody's familiar with Chicago Cares, but it's an organization where um, they go out and they actually have full-time staff that's paid and everything. They go out and they find a whole bunch of volunteer projects and they set them up and then they put them on this calendar and then people, can, people who are members of Chicago Cares can just sign up for volunteer projects when they work for you. And it was really cool for me because I was a consultant at the time, which meant that I was traveling all over the place and you know, very seldom in the same place very long and I never knew when I was gonna be in town or not except for the weekends. And so you know, it was, just, it was hard for me to do something that you have to do every week, which a lot of volunteer projects are, and it was hard for me to do something that varied you know, different types of things like that. So I used Chicago Cares all the time and I was able to sign up for different types of things whenever I knew I was gonna be in town. And so I thought that was really cool. And then when I moved back to Champaign to start working for the university, I had a couple of weeks off before I started. And I was like, well, I'll go do some volunteering in the meantime. And in those two weeks, I couldn't get people to call me back. I couldn't, you know, I, I couldn't get anything done. I didn't end up volunteering at all in those two weeks, even though I was willing to spend any time, I, you know, any time that I had volunteering. And I was like, you know, this is way too hard and it's really stupid for volunteering to be hard because people need volunteers. So it should be easier. And I was used to Chicago Cares, so I was like, hey, this is a great idea. We should do this in Champaign. Um, oh, and make it easy. <laughs> Sorry, I forgot about that. Okay, so that was the idea, right? The second thing you need is a great team. And so, um, <laughs> so basically I figured, okay, well I feel like this. I'm sure there's other people in the community that feel like this. So I started talking to people and things and I found some other people in the community who were also like, yes, this is a great idea, let's do this. 
Um, but I also learned that just because you have like five or six people who think it's a great idea doesn't mean that you can actually get anything done. So we, we kind of, you know, had some meetings and talked about some things and nothing happened and I was like, you know, this still isn't working. So I enlisted another team and some of these people are here. So we've got um, George and Michael who are in the room and Beth. And then um, we, we enlisted Sue from the United Way. I don't know if any of you work with the United Way, but her name is Sue Gray. She's the CEO. She wasn't at the time, but she is now. Um, there, this guy, Alex, here, um, he actually works in the research park. And at the time, he was not working in the research park, but he agreed, to, he was an IT guy and agreed to help with all the development and everything. And then Vanita was in the Office of Volunteer Programs at the time, and she worked here at the university and had a whole bunch of student volunteers and things like that. <coughs> and then there was me. I don't remember who I am. But anyway, um, so these were all the people that, that came together. So I, I do remember that we finally got to a point where I was like, okay, this could potentially be working. And um, what we decided to do was um, we got to the point where we had, the, we had a student group who had created like a sort of a system. And it kind of worked, but not exactly. And so um, I talked to Pradeep Khanna, and he said, well, you know, this could be a really good public engagement project. I think you should talk to the MISTI folks. So this, this was before the team was recruited. So I was like, okay, so we had a meeting with them, and I meet George and Michael, and I'm like, I've got an idea. <laughs> and they're kind of like, okay. <laughs> but anyway, so they thought it was a great idea, too. And I, I do remember when we were meeting, we were met in a room in Swan that I remember, because basically George kind of looked at Michael, and he was like, well, do you think you can do this? And Michael's like, yeah, <laughs> because I think he knew it was going to be a lot of work. But he said yes, they said yes, and it was, it was fabulous because now um, we have to see a volunteer. But anyway, so that's how they got involved, and they were very enthusiastic about it, and the minute they said yes, then it was like, okay, we're going to do this. So um, the third thing that you need... The key to success. No, it wasn't that. Can we look at notes? <laughs> I honestly don't remember what the third thing is. <laughs> I haven't done this for a really long time. Well, uh, if you hit escape, we should be able to view the notes for you. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, what was this? The next Key element partners. here. <laughs> Key partners. <laughs> oh, okay. That makes sense. <laughs> okay. So, key partners. Okay, so besides MISTI, of course, I mean, the university was already basically into it, so nobody really had a choice. <laughs> but um, then we had the United Way. I mentioned Sue Gray, so the United Way was, of course, in, in it. And then we also had a number of other, other partners who were very important. So we had um, Do Good Consulting, which is a um, consulting, for non consulting organizations here in town, consulting organization here in town for um, nonprofit organizations. And I think I'm at any, oh, no, I don't, okay. And then the other, the other great partner we had was Busey Bank, because they have this thing called their Community Promise, where they give back to the community, and um, they got really excited about this and decided that this would work well with what they do every, for National Volunteer Week, they do a bunch of volunteering. So they kind of signed on to this as well, and so they provided some support to some people. Hi, James. Hello. Get some, get some pizza. I'm uh, fine, go ahead. Okay. Um, so anyway, so we, we had some great partners there, and then um, the partners were really what helped to make it successful just because, you know, there was so much work to do and so many people that we needed involved. So that was great. And then, um, oh, these are all the partners. I actually probably should have looked at this before. Um, could you, <laughs> wait, how did you do that? Okay. So the University of Illinois was one, and then the United Way, and then Busey. These are actually pictures from our, from our kickoff event. Um, so then, basically, after we got everybody involved, so the countdown begins, and on July 19th, which actually was a very cool day because it was my birthday, we went to the United Way and we presented to the executive directors there. They have, they have get all their, their executive directors for all their agencies together. And so we, we announced it to them, and actually before we started, somebody had asked me if I'd seen the paper. Do you remember that? Mm -hmm. Somebody asked me if I'd seen the paper, and I was like, no, why? And we had talked to the News Gazette a little bit earlier, so I knew that they would probably cover something, and they came and took pictures and stuff, so that wasn't a surprise. But they brought the paper up, and then um, we ended up on the front page. That, that's Alex there, actually, the real Alex, and then Michael and me, and we actually ended up on the front page, which was very surprising and also very, very good. Um, it was a Tuesday, I think, so they don't have a lot of news on Tuesdays, apparently, and so we got <laughs> the front page. But that was very exciting. So we started the meeting, we're like, okay, we're getting on the front page, and we talked to the agencies, and they were really excited about it, we got some really good feedback from them, and so, so it was just a great way to launch it. And then, um, I actually realized that our hypothesis was wrong, that those three elements, yes, were all correct, 
but you actually need a couple of other things. So I think that once we got it launched, you, everybody's always like, oh, congratulations, that's great, it's done, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, oh, you know, now that we've actually gotten this far, I realize this is so not done. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I think one of the hardest things is keeping people excited about it and keeping it going. And so the ongoing maintenance is really important, and that's something where Rebecca comes in, and she works a lot on the site, and she's made improvements and made changes, and, and that sort of thing. Yeah. Is there anything now related? Um, no, I'm good. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so maintenance is really important, and that's where Misty has been amazing. Then you've also got Beth, who is doing a lot of social media for, for it and everything, and, and that sort of thing. So I think that's been really helpful. And then I can't, OVP is not here, but they have been amazing as well, because they have all their service ambassadors, and they get in touch with the agencies and things like that. So that's been important, too. And then the other thing is passion. Um, it, this was something where, I mean, of course I've like done things before, but this was probably one of the biggest things that I'd ever actually kind of decided was an idea and then, and then decided it should actually happen before. And I realized that there are so many times along the way where you're just kind of like, you know, maybe this isn't as important as I thought and we should just forget about it because this is just not working. I mean, we would have one thing after another where you're like, you know, you get two steps forward, you're really excited, and then all of a sudden it's like, okay, now we actually don't, the site's not working or something like that. So um, I think the passion and persistence is really, really important too. So we, did, we concluded that you have to have five things to launch an effective public initiative. So this was actually the Pataka Chop presentation. Um, so I was thinking that maybe, James, where did James go? Here. James, come sit at the table. <laughs> <laughs> this is James. This is James Barham. Is Caroline coming? Or uh, no, she's okay. unfortunately just stuck with you okay. So this is James Barham, and he owns Indigo Art Gallery downtown. And um, I'm going to talk just a little bit about his experience with Steve on here. Uh, yes, we. Uh, I started Indigo Gallery. It'll be five years this April, and just kind of on a whim. It's just kind of a more. Of, I call it. It's really more of a community center or exhibit place. Uh, we donate it usually uh, the majority is for um, uh, students organizations MFA shows uh, we do a lot of charities like currently we're doing the hatch reuse uh, for the idea store and all the funds go for CU school foundation and such and we're just kind of a mixed bag we let anyone in with student groups you know we had an MBA wine tasting last night so do a lot of unique stuff and it's a lot of fun especially trying to bridge the the students with to the community but we were we, we had a problem that we were never once an artist was there we, we could never be open and because I couldn't afford to staff it so um, all of a sudden it was kind of funny I'd met Sarah just more socially and uh, was telling her one day about the gallery and how this all of a sudden that this we started having volunteers and you know when students would show up for shows they always get excited and not just students a lot of people get excited and say they want to come back and help and usually never see them again but uh, which is you know which is understandable I've done the same myself so uh, but all of a sudden people started showing up and I just kept asking like what well, you know how'd you find us and it was see volunteer.org and it was just repeated and repeated and repeated and in fact right now we're, we're fully staffed and have been for I'm a horrible judge of past time when, when did your site start about two and a half years I was gonna ago. say it's two I was gonna say a year ago January it's actually two years ago January we have been almost completely staffed. In fact, last night, uh, I think every current volunteer right now has found us on cuvolunteer.org, so I'm a huge advocate of it. I tell every non-for-profit that comes in, and because we, we do, we work a lot with non-for-profits, and, uh, and in fact, one of the most uh, current examples was a young lady just moved down from Alaska, did not know anyone, she's here getting her master's in uh, English Lit found us on that site and she's just been a you know real welcome and uh, work a lot with the international students too so it's really has completely changed our gallery so I'm forever grateful for uh, Sarah and her team that put this site together for us. So. And I don't pay him either. <laughs> no, that's my, that's my, no I mean it. It's, it's, it's obviously a passion of mine and it's just so neat to see it work you know to see it come together like this. So. Well and Jim, Jim has given back to us too because um, and I just called you Jim I'm sorry. Jim. That's right. James is giving back to us too because last year after an event that we had, we had a reception at Indigo and it was in for free. <laughs> we had paid for food, but that was it. And it's a really neat space if you've never been there. I you know, I encourage you to just, just go. And I think actually the weekend that of the day of service this year, there's gonna be some artwork from the what's it called? Illinois genomics? 
Oh, yeah, we have the Institute of Genomic Biology. That that yeah. show started four years ago. This will be the fourth year coming up. And last year's images this is pretty neat. We just put this out yesterday. Is that last year's images are are in Midway and O'Hare Airport, which is I extremely hard. I watched those just recently. They look that, really nice. That's hard to do. In fact, the head of uh, Cranford Art Museum, Kathleen, came up to me. He's like, "How'd you guys get that in there?" And <laughs> I, that's pretty impressive when they're in. and. Uh, it, it turned out just on a kind of on a whim that a uh, local businessman, uh, Doug Nelson, saw these images and said, "You know, these are art, and uh, they're you know they're manipulated, uh, you know, images from their from their lab." But uh, it was funny to get these professors and researchers. I didn't know who these people were at first, and I one's this huge tall guy. He cracks me up, but he they act like little kids in there, and I'm like, and I'm like. Who, and it turns out these guys have take all these images that are in national, worldwide, you know, publications, and to see them off campus and see them framed in a gallery, they were so excited, and it has turned into a major show, and their major outreach for the uh, the community, and it's 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 just a fun fun event. So, but then, and they're cool images too. They're, yeah. uh, they always put one banner up, and uh, first year everyone was fascinated about it, and it was a it was a Mouse embryo. <laughs> that was sliced very thin. Really? Yeah, yeah, it was bizarre. <laughs> Interesting to see people's reaction to that once they found out what it was. <laughs> but uh, but uh, yeah, it's it's a it's a phenomenal show. Well, anyway, so thank you for your support. No, I enjoyed it. Very I, supportive as well. well, well we like and I think he has sold it to more people than I have, which is great. <laughs> <laughs> it so, um, do you want to talk a little bit about your role? Sure. Um, so <coughs> our office kind of took on. The, um, the hosting and maintenance of the site. So it was originally developed as a senior design project by a group of students, um, a group of CS students. Um, and so they got it they got it pretty well there, but then it still <coughs> needed some, some work and some um, effort to make it really ready to go live. So um, we spent some time, um, Alex uh, did some development work that first summer, we had about two months from when they handed off the code and everything to us to make it work and get ready for the launch. So um, we got it to uh, a good place for the launch, but there's still, you know, it's been what, two and a half years, and there's still been plenty to work on, and uh, as Rebecca can attest, um, you know, there's always bug reports, and there always will be, and um, feature requests, and things to try and help it work better. Or add in new functionality. So um, that's sort of part of what we've been working on ever since, and presumably for quite some time. So <laughs> um, I would say that the whole idea seemed pretty easy. You know, you just create this site so that you can connect um, nonprofits and volunteers. And it sounds like it's not that big of a deal, but I think Rebecca can attest <coughs> that that's not necessarily the case. Can talk about some of the enhancements that you made? Um, there's a lot of stuff going on on the site. Kind of when I got it, it had the very basic features of uh, an organization posts an opportunity, and then volunteers can view information about that opportunity, sign up for the opportunity. Um, can you see the site? Sure. Oh, yeah. Mm. Um, sign up for an opportunity, and then, you know, they have, that's kind of it. There's nothing that you know tells the volunteer, well, these are all the things you signed up for. If you want to find your opportunity, you have to go search for it again, click on it, um, and then hope that the thing's still up there because it's bolded um, when you're on the actual opportunity profile page. We've been trying a lot to make the site more usable and kind of something that people keep coming back to. Make it nice enough that it's an enjoyable experience for users and not just something they have to do to get to the volunteering. Um, so this is the front page. This calendar is one of my favorite things we've done. Um, it was here when I got it. We've made some improvements to kind of make it more readable. Um, it's kind of a great at a glance of what's going on in the community because when you hover over one of the links, um, it'll give you kind of a short summary of the opportunity. Um, and it just kind of randomly picks something that's going on in the next few days. So it's, I think it's a really great feature to kind of, as soon as you get here, you can kind of start choosing opportunities. Well, I could be doing something tomorrow. Uh, this time tomorrow. Um, we've been adding um, other features as well. Now a volunteer can actually go to its profile page and see a list of all of the, all of the opportunities that we're volunteered for, everything that's coming up that they want to volunteer for. 
Um, in the future, we want to add ways that organizations can kind of approve volunteers who have been to their opportunities. Um, we want to know if somebody's kind of signing up for things and then never showing up, but there's not a lot of communication right now between organizations and the site after they post something up. So there's a lot of new things we want to add on that front, but we've been trying to make it just easier and easier for people to find opportunities. Mouse. Um, oh, hey. Yeah, there we go. Um, we've been adding new search functionality. You can now search for like a one-time opportunity, something that doesn't have a lot of time commitment. You know, nobody's going to be asking you to come back over and over again. Or you can search only for things that are going to be happening over and over again. If you want to say like, I've got this hour every Saturday, this is what I want to be doing during that time. Um, you can search in dates. Um, so I can only, vol I'm only going to be in town for a week, find me something that's going on during those weeks. And this is one of the things I'm really happy about. Um, CU Scholars is a program that's here. Um, CU Scholars is a program that kind of encourages the high schoolers in the area to give back to the community. They have a number of volunteer hours that they have to complete every semester, um, but of course they're all under 18 and a lot of opportunities really aren't appropriate for um, anybody who like isn't supervised by an adult. But at the same time, a lot of people really want to have teenagers and middle schoolers in their opportunities. So we've been adding these um, age fields. Um, where you can, you can search for something, you know, I've got a teenager and I've got, you know, a kindergartner. Find the opportunities that I can bring both of my children to, um, which is great because it's kind of turned it into both something the CU Scholars can use and do a more family experience that people can bring their, their children with them to volunteer. Which so, we love because that gives them a Yeah, it good gets example. started really early. So, but we're always looking for more things to add to the site. We're kind of only limited by our imagination here. But my imagination isn't that big, so that's why we need you guys <laughs> to use this site and suggest things. The feedback form is right here. This is the feedback form. So go, use the site, and leave me feedback, and I will add things for you guys. Please. <laughs> and they're amazing. They're very responsive, too. Pat, have you had lots of students using the site, or...? Yeah, I've been promoting it. Um, we have a volunteer uh, opportunities brochure that we put together for the students with um, recurring opportunities and then ones that I know come at a particular time every year. Um, and then we list the cuvolunteer.org as the place to go if you know if they can't find anything that I've already listed, go here. And we've had a lot of people use it. And we um, at our uh, registration, we have the brochure business card with the, with the site. Um, and then what I do a lot of times is I'll, um, when I have time, I'll scroll through myself, find things, and then I will put those up on Facebook myself as just another, like, for more information, I found this on cuvolunteer.org, go there for, to sign up. So. so it's been really, really helpful. Good. Because it is hard, as you said, with if you're under 18, um, and a lot of opportunities take place during the week, uh, during the school day, so it is often hard to find things that are after school or weekends. So it's been very helpful to go on the website and be able to filter in that way. So <coughs> thank you. <laughs> well, the other thing that I thought we'd talk just a little bit about is, um, and put a plug in for, is the Community Campus Day of Service, which is coming up on April 5th. And actually, if you want to navigate to that, we have a page for that too. Michael, our webmaster, has <laughs> created a page for the, um, for the Community Campus Day of Service. And there's a couple other people in the room who are contributing to that as well. Can you say hi? <laughs> um, so we've got a number of students involved. What I'm really, really excited about, and this was actually, I think, one of our goals with this, um, from Steve Volunteer and the Day of Service. The, w the way that that came around is I think it was just kind of, you know, a no-brainer. Everybody agreed that, okay, if we have people who are interested in volunteering, let's do a day where everybody volunteers. And what I really liked about this is that it's not just a university thing, it's a, it's a university and a community thing. And so last year was the first time that we ever did this. Um, we had about 1,500 people come out and volunteer that the day, it was April 20th last year. And um, it was, I was kind of surprised, I thought we'd have a whole lot of students because we have great students here who are always interested in volunteering, but when we actually looked at who showed up, it was about like 40% students and then it was about 30-ish percent faculty staff and 30-ish percent community, so we were really excited about the fact that we had such good participation. Were you going to say something? Oh, okay. And then um, 
The other thing that I thought was really neat is that this year especially, um, Carrie's been working a lot with several student organizations and we've got students who are just promoting the heck out of this thing. So do you want to talk about that, Annie? Yeah, um, so I just graduated in May. Um, well, I keep saying that thinking May is soon, but it's coming on a year now, so I guess the next May is the new deadline. <laughs> Anyways, um, so I have recently graduated, and uh, I did a lot of service when I was in school here. I was a, a part of a service fraternity called Alpha Phi Omega, and we have the largest chapter out of any schools in the nation, so we, we did a lot of service. So I was um, looking for ways to keep doing service as a staff member, and Sarah happened to be sort of down the hall, and I heard her saying it in the hallway, and I just kind of jumped in, and um, I, I volunteered to work with, get um, some student organizations involved since I still had those relationships, and so we sort of formed a subcommittee, because um, what, initially, uh, Alpha Phi Omega wanted to plan some awareness events, and I said, well, oh, that's great. Um, I want to do social media, because that's some things I do at work. So why don't I talk with you guys so that I make sure I promote what you're doing through social media. And then um, we realized we could expand that to the whole day itself, and but we would need more manpower. Um, so Alpha Phi Omega kept planning their events, and we invited um, other people, other students who were interested on the committee to join the subcommittee, which we formed. And since then, we've sort of developed, um, we've developed a campaign strategy for uh, for the social media to side of it to, to sort of talk about the hunger issues in the area, um, how we are actively addressing those, uh, or what opportunities are available, so on the day of service, and then um, other opportunities, what service organizations you can get involved with, how do you volunteer, what do you do when you volunteer, and then the last um, sort of key message is, is how we all volunteer in, in this area, and, and that Illinois is a very service-oriented community. So the students all know this campaign, and now it's expanded from just doing these awareness events, which they were doing leading up to the event um, itself, but they're also participating in the social media um, campaign. So there's the programming teams, there's content teams who are creating all sorts of Facebook posts, tweets, um, infographics, all sorts of multimedia content. They're, they're shooting the video next week, and there, there's somebody just showing the committee that are getting um, some new student newspapers involved that are talking about uh, there's a, a, one of the events is on food waste, so they're, they're going to, the Green Observer, which is a student um, environmental publication, they're going to come and, and volunteer. So what I like about students in service is they respond very quickly, and they're just eager to do anything. So, um, for example, t today we figured out that we need, like, 40 volunteers on Monday, and we pretty much already have them. So it's not hard to get people to do service, but like Sarah said, if you just, if you build it, they'll come, but we have to build it first. So. Uh, I'm really excited to see that the students can participate because as a student myself, I was often sort of, where does the university, the university go do service? I knew that the university promoted this ideal, but I didn't know who on campus does it, how do I connect with those people, and you sort of feel like, well, they're campus, I'm a student, there's a, not a relationship there, but that's changed now that I'm on the other side. <laughs> and um, I just, I, Sarah and I have been talking about several other things that we can, um, be involved with the students later on, so it's been really positive so far. Thank you. Yeah. And I put you on the spot. You did great. Um, no, that's great. I appreciate that. Um, there was something else I was going to mention about that, but I can't remember what it was. Anyway. Oh, uh, can I put a plug in, I guess? So yeah. if you guys follow on social media at all, you should go like the page. Um, if you have Twitter, you can follow the handle. Um, you can follow the hashtags. You can, yeah, it's all right there. So hashtag CCDOS14 is the official tag, but we'll also be using hashtag Illinois Service because the University of Illinois, that's how they brand um, a lot of their social media marketing. So Illinois Service. But a Facebook is probably a way that everyone's familiar with. Twitter is, is less familiar with a lot of audiences, but it's um, something we're going to use, especially to reach, my target is, is a lot of national and international groups that do this all the time and, and we can reach them through social media. Great. And actually, oh, go yeah, ahead. Yeah, sorry, one more thing. The, the, I mean, we're almost at 100 likes, and I've posted like three times. So the official campaign launch is next Friday. So we haven't posted anything really that's like I would consider real content. We've just been posting updates about the, the training meetings, and we're already seeing a lot of really great uh, feedback from it. That's great. And so that's day of service specific. Mm -hmm. And then Beth actually takes care of our social media for our volunteer 
Michael and two And Michael and two <laughs> sorry. But I know, but I always send stuff to Beth, so I know that she does, she does a lot of work with Beth. And then Maura has been kind of helping with some of the background stuff, making my life much easier. That's what Maura does. <laughs> Which is important. We like to have money. So, But anyway, James, did you want to mention anything else? Uh, who's been to Vandigo here? Good. Keep coming. <laughs> or come visit, please. No, I'm, I'm happy to be here and honored to be here, so thank you. Okay. Um, basically, I think, did you have anything else you want to say or should we? No. Okay. Well, we're, we're interested in a couple of things. If you have any questions at all, you know, or discussion or comments or something, we'd be happy to hear that. And then also, if you have any ideas about, I mean, as I mentioned, maintenance is, I think, and ongoing is one of the harder things. <coughs> so, um, the Office of Volunteer Programs helps a lot by contacting agencies, but if you have any ideas as to how we can get either more students or more agencies involved or more people from the community, we'd also love to hear your ideas. You mentioned some initiatives that you had in mind in terms of developing your website. I was wondering if the group as a whole has any um, plans for the future and the other directions that they'd like to, to take on. Good question. Extension. Hmm? Well, there are, there's extension of other communities that we've been thinking about. Hmm. Um, we've been contacted recently by some people in Can Kankakee. Kankakee, um, yeah. yeah. there we go. Um, and some other places as well who kind of want a similar site to CU Volunteer in their communities. So something we've been thinking about doing, and it's a big step for us to kind of say whether or not we're doing it, um, is to export the site so that it can be used by community colleges, um, other colleges, kind of anybody who wants to have CU Volunteer in their community. At which point it wouldn't be CU Volunteer anymore, it would be <laughs> something else I guess. But it's. It's an exciting idea because it means that we get to kind of spread this opportunity to connect organizations with volunteers to other areas. But it's a little terrifying because we have to, you know, support the site for people that we're, we don't know. I might never meet them, um, but I have to kind of help, I have to keep their site up and running. So it's something that we are heavily considering doing, but we're kind of not sure whether or not it's going to be possible yet. Um, it's an exciting direction to go in, though. So, um, other than that, we're really just trying to extend kind of the functionality of the site. We've got it to a condition where it's pretty stable. Nobody's popping up bug reports or corrupting the database or anything like that. Um, so now is the time when we kind of want to push out and add more things. Just make it more usable um, for our users. Make it easier for them to find volunteers they're interested in. So, yeah. Do you have a um, Do you? Um, and maybe I missed this on the site, but is there a way to um, reverse the process? So I'm an organization that's got students, and the organizations may not know, you know, sometimes students aren't as proactive, high school students, as they should be about going, and they tend to rely on mom and dad to do it for them. But if I, as an organization, can go post on the site, we're a group, we have all these students, uh, please contact me with your, uh, events that you might have coming up with and then I can then take that out to the group um, because I think I think the students don't tend to be as proactive and I think when I put it out there when I say when I say listen up people here's some opportunities then I get a little bit better response than relying on them to go to the site and um, find something themselves as I said they tend to rely on their parents to do it so if I were able to, you know, post my group on the site, and then other organizations might see that when they're posting their opportunities, they could then contact me. I don't know if so you're saying, I, I, let me make sure. So it's the reverse of so what you're saying now. that you could get a group of students at a certain time that would be available, and then no, just to advertise the fact that we have all these volunteers that need hours, and that they're between 14 and 18, and um, to contact me with to let me know when they have things coming up more directly. Um, because for me, it's sort of hit or miss a lot of the time. If I'm not busy, maybe once a month, I might sit down and start and go through the page and look for things and then compile a list of things to post. But if I were being contacted more frequently or more directly by, by an organization that's going on the website and they say, oh, okay, I see there's a bunch of high school students here that could use ours, then they can contact me more directly. 
Yeah, I mean, just going off that a little bit too, because this is something that we were thinking about doing for our organization, and almost like developing maybe a database uh, for volunteers to almost fill out like a profile of what they're interested in helping out with, their availability, and however they could personalize it so that unique to them opportunities are maybe shared with them somehow. So I'm not sure how that, is that kind of what you're? It's kind of, you could say, okay, I'm, like maybe you're a Boy Scout troop, or maybe you're like, we are at CU Scholars, and you could, we could make a page and say, okay, we have X number of high school students, they're between 14 and 18, most of them can only volunteer, you know, from this time after school, weekends, and then their breaks. Um, if you have things that fall into it and would be appropriate for this age group, please contact us or something like that. That's an interesting idea. The, right now we have um, very, very basic volunteer profile functionality on the site. It's actually one of those features that exists, but we've hidden it because we don't have a use for it yet. Um, so that could be something we could add in the future is kind of make the, be able to make those profiles public. It'd probably be something you should opt into because we don't want organizations contacting volunteers who really don't want any yeah, contact from organizations. Contact high school students directly. They would be. They would contact me, and then I would vet them to make sure they're legit, and then send it out to. It probably students. have to be a situation where we need to talk to the organizations to see if that's something they'd be interested in. Because I know a lot of the orga the the organizations have you know like one person who's responsible for posting all their things on volunteer on CU volunteer those people may not really have the time to just go looking for volunteers. So it might be a feature that we would add and the volunteers would use it, but the organizations wouldn't, and then the volunteers would be like, well, you know, I've put it up here, why is nobody contacting me anymore? So that's something that we're going to have to discuss about whether or not we want to add, but it's a very um, interesting idea. I haven't heard anybody ask for something like that before. I like the idea, and I like your idea of a profile. I mean, we have profiles, but um one thing we could potentially do is, um, I, th I agree with, with Rebecca, we probably want to talk with agencies just to make sure. My, my concern would be that because of the limited time they have available, that you don't know how, how much that would be used. But we could see what they think. Yeah. And in the meantime, you know, until we've made a decision on that, one thing we could do is, is work through the United Way to like, you know, remind their, their agencies once a month that, you know, hey, there's, this, there's groups of students who might be willing to volunteer if you have a project or something on that order. Um, and also maybe watch for things when they come in to see a volunteer that might be good for groups and just kind of ping you or something like that. So those are some things we could potentially do in the meantime. We do have an RSS feed. Can I have the mouse real quick? Yes. Okay, so this is a feature I added a lot. This is the first feature I ever added to see you volunteer. So, oh, it's um, kind of neat. Yeah, I'm kind of nostalgic about it. So say you have a bunch of teenagers <laughs> um, and you want to only find opportunities that are available for teenagers. So these are all the opportunities that a teenager can up volunteer for. You then go to the RSS feed and this will create a feed for you that you can put into your favorite feed reader. There's versions for your desktop, the versions for your um, browser if nobody's used RSS feeds before. It's kind of a news publishing thing where you subscribe to feeds and it feeds that into kind of one reader so all your news sources are in one location and you kind of easily browse things. So this um, has put up all of the upcoming opportunities in kind of order of when they'll show up. So this is a feed that will say these are all the opportunities that somebody has said it's appropriate for a teenager to attend. And now if you stick this in your feed reader, um, every time you open up the feed reader, it'll say, oh, hey, look, um, tomorrow at noon, there's a volunteer photographer position open, and we can go volunteer for that right now. So if you're just kind of looking to be automatically updated for when these things happen, this RSS feed is an option, especially if you already use RSS. By the way, that was Indigo. That's kind of funny. I know. Um, I will say that this is, why in the formula, <laughs> this is why in the formula team is so important. I had totally <coughs> forgot you did that. That is very cool. I, <laughs> so I didn't see that either, but that's, that'll be helpful. Yeah, so it's um, yeah. it's a cool thing until we might maybe get something else up in the future. Yeah. Um, anyone else? Yeah, it you works can in the meantime, at least. Yeah. It works for pretty much anything you can search for. So say you're not a teenager, um, but you do want to search for, um, you do want to search for opportunities that um, have to do with hunger. So you're really interested in hunger. Um, so you search for that, um, and oh, there's not many feeds, there's not many opportunities having to do with hunger. Um, but then all of the opportunities that have something to do with hunger um, or you can choose kind of any other interest, any other skill, any organization if you only want to follow one organization's opportunities. Um, feeds for everyone. Um, useful for, if there's pretty much any kind of search that you commonly perform on the site, this might be something you're interested in looking into. 
so, so funny. Every time you guys talk about the site, I realize how much better it is than I even think it is. Better. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that was a great question, though. And um, we'll actually be talking next week, so I'm interested more in, in what you heard. Do you guys want to talk at all about what you're trying to do? Yeah, sure. Kind of going off with the conversation we've been having is we realize, you know, to your point, Sarah, is that a lot of these organizations don't have the time to, first of all, even really post what opportunities are available. You know, they're understaffed and, you know, they need as much time to focus on performing the mission. So, you know, we spoke with United Way, um, we were speaking with your organization and Hands On Suburban, which is more focused in Chicago and area. And we're hoping to kind of create a niche group that is more focused on being the liaison between all these groups who are aware of these opportunities and maybe channel a uh, group of students right now, we are working with the College of Business and Engineering and developing uh, certain skill sets within these uh, within these organizations for these students um, to come into these nonprofits, these organizations, and add help immediately without you know needing their hand help or without you know really disrupting the day to day activities of these nonprofits. And you know we think that this is a great website. There's a lot of skill based opportunities on there. You know our job would be to kind of help fulfill those positions. That's great. I look forward to hearing more about it. Yep. You guys have other questions or thoughts or comments? Do you have anything? Create an yeah. event for Indigo. Please come use us. <laughs> <laughs> come in there. You guys seem active. You guys come in. Get involved. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. James, thank you for coming. Thank you guys. Pizza time. Yeah. <laughs> um, if anybody Everybody else has any questions, pizza. we'll probably be here for a little bit. Um, thank you for coming, though. We appreciate it. Thank you for sharing.